And I think we're live. Well, let's just check and see, shall we? I see our- All Earth. right, you guys. Thanks for tuning in if you're with us now. And when you tune in later, listening to the replay, I'm here this evening with two coaches on my team, Kelly and Ned Vandiver, and they are gonna join me tonight to discuss this week's topic, which is you are not a victim of your circumstances or your spouse. Now, this is a really inflammatory topic, but it's super important and it's coming up a lot. So I'm excited to talk about this with you guys. And awesome. I know Ned and Kelly are as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we hear from people every day who are struggling with issues of um, accountability and blame and victim mentality. Um, yeah. There's folks that are talking about they're feeling blamed by their partner for the situation in their relationship. If they're having problems, they feel unfairly blamed, um, like the fingers being pointed at them. Um, and then there's people that we talk to that are blaming their partners for their situation and they're very outward focused and they're not really recognizing the power that they have. And um, while it's important to look at what's actually happening and the truth about what our partners are doing and we want to see things clearly, staying in that place of pointing the finger and blaming is not useful, right? It's just a starting point. And when we stay stuck there, it causes all kinds of problems. So um, that's why we're going to talk about this. It doesn't ultimately get us what we want. And it's tempting to go into that place um, because we live in a culture that rewards victim mindset and encourages it. And I know sometimes we feel better if we can blame our partner, if we can say it's not our fault um, when things are really hard. And we find comfort and relief in that. Yeah. I know my husband and I have vied for the victim position in arguments in the past, too, where we're literally trying to um, argue with the other person about who's who's more of the victim. We don't use the word victim, but it's like who's more transgressed, who's the more wounded person, who's the person that needs amends, you know? And yeah. it, it never ends, never actually gets us anywhere. Yeah, but we um, go right to that. Yeah. And if you can, then you're in the right place tonight. So we're gonna talk about yeah. what is the mindset exactly? You know, what do we mean when we say that? And we're gonna give some examples. And then we're gonna talk about why it's a problem, how it shows up, and what you can do to get your power back and actually make the changes that you wanna make to be, you know, get present to the power that you have to create the relationship that you really want and go in that direction rather than staying stuck. Because if you can master this, you will be able to turn around your relationship completely. It's, it's a game changer. Oh, yeah. And if nothing else, you will get clarity and confidence and the ability to problem solve in ways you haven't thought of if you can master this. Even if your partner never turns around and, and if it's really not the right relationship with you, for you, um, if you can still start to think in this way that we're gonna talk about tonight, you will get such clarity and power and confidence that you'll be able to make the hard decisions that you need to make with certainty. Definitely. So either way, it's a good thing to learn, right? Regardless of what your partner is doing. You're right on. So let's start, let's jump right in. What is victim mindset? What do we mean when we say this and how does it show up? Um, in your experience, Ned and Kelly, what do you guys see as the biggest like symptom of this mindset? Uh, well, for me, I definitely, first of all, it's a divine, uh, defined victim mindset. It's, uh, it's taking a total lack of accountability around situations. Um, generally, you know, conversations or um, experiences that you're going through in your relationship that, you know, are, creating difficult situations between two of you, you know, whether it be intimacy, whether it be connection, but it's the total lack of accountability on, on the part of one or two people where right. they are totally deflecting all of their issues or all of the issues that are occurring through the experience onto the other person. And, it's, yeah. and you know, we have, we talk to people every day and this is a huge symptom or, or problem that I hear about, um, with a lot of the, you know, we talked to a lot of ladies and a lot of the men have a tendency to hold this frame and, and uh, respond this way to their spouses when they're dealing with these types of situations. So it's, it, and it's, it's very unfortunate because it creates a huge disconnect um, between the two people, which, you know, pretty much creates more of a problem uh, of 
a lack of communication, lack of intimacy, and just overall connection overall. But I mean, that that's mm -hmm. truly what it is. And that's the way it generally shows up is just that the person, mm -hmm. is, you know, it's not my fault. And for the most part, yeah. it's your fault, not mine, that we're mm -hmm. good. You yeah. know, you need help yeah. around this, you know, more than anything. I, I do everything I can. I've done everything I can. And this is the, generally the way the discussions go between the men and the women. And, and I'm being the man right now. And this is generally the way it shows up and the way it sounds in the conversation. So I, it's, a, it's really unfortunate that the, the ladies have to be on the end of this. Um, it has a, it, it begins to create an effect in the, in the woman also. Um, sometimes they begin to believe the, the, what they hear from their, you know, their husbands, uh, but we'll get more into that later. But yeah, that, this is, this is how it really shows up. And this is the victim mindset that we're talking about tonight. And, and there's another part yes. that I just interject. Am I lagging or something? Or it's a little echo. Mute? That's all. Mute. Maybe. Maybe you could mute or can. Yeah, Ned, you can mute when Kelly's talking and vice versa. And I don't know how to do that, by the way. How do you mute yourself? But I think it's good now. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So I just wanted to interject. It's doing it again. It's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, that, that victim mindset goes both ways, babe. You are explaining from the male point of view. Um, and there's the victim mindset on the female side. Too. And a lot of times when women are um, going to have these conversations and connect um, and other in other ways it shows up too and we'll get into those but there are a lot of women in relationship who um, are in these toxic situations and in these toxic marriages and relationships and they stay and they put up with stuff and they have no boundaries and yeah. they never speak up and they, they never speak truth to power and so we'll get into all that as well but there is that feminine female side of victim mentality where it's like he does this to me keeps doing this to me why does he keep doing this to me you know so yeah, that yeah. Is a form of victim mindset as well yeah definitely yep yep it's like living from the mindset of powerlessness right exactly it's like not recognizing the power that you have because if you're focusing on what they're doing what can you do except just stay there and keep observing it and yes. experiencing the same thing over and over again. You're right. not actually going to take action to exactly. do anything. Great cycle. If you're in that mindset, right? Yeah. Um, it's it's living so you have no control, um, and you can do it because you really truly just don't see the power that you have, or you can do it because you don't want to, to see the power that you have because there's a payoff in it being the other person's fault. Yeah. That's staying stuck there's some kind of secondary gain yeah. um yeah, also i notice that um aside from blaming and dwelling and hurt and powerlessness sometimes it's like what you were saying kelly um the the dwelling and the hurt and the like why is this happening why me kind of thing right um there's also the ability or the lack of ability to apologize yeah that shows up too I yeah. talk to people who are like, my partner has apologized once in like 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and a I, big yeah, well, red flag too. Yeah, definitely. And 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 I hear that probably, uh, you know, well, m as much as you do um, from the ladies, especially when we talk about infidelity. Um, mm -hmm. There have been cases, you know, people have told me that the husbands, not only are they not apologetic um, and really owning the fact that they've made a huge mistake and feel very bad about it, they become defensive when the spouse actually brings it up and, and wants to gain some clarity around it. They want to talk yeah. about it. Um, the guys have a tendency that, you know, kind of want to shove it under the carpet and, and you know, tell the, you know, the, the, their spouse to kind of just, let's just kind of move along. You know, we need to forget that, you know, and that's a huge problem, you know, because, when you have something of this magnitude occur in the relationship, it needs to be discussed and it needs to be talked about yeah. and it needs to be dealt with. Now, there's a way that you go about that and you do it constructively. Uh, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about tonight. But 
that the, the fact that there's so many guys who are not able to stand up and stand in the position of, you know, owning what has taken place. Um, and, and when you hurt someone like this, is a huge problem. And it's even an, it's an even bigger problem for the women to take the onus of what is going on and feeling, you know, like that it's, it's their fault. You know, it's, it's horrible. You know, it's a horrible place to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, it's like the failure to own the thing that was the transgression in the first place, but yeah. then also dif, dif, minimizing, um, minimizing is a way of not taking on accountability, but also there's that refusal to be part of the repair process Yeah. to say, if you move on, we would be fine. Yeah. I've already, yeah. and even if they have already said they're sorry, maybe they have owned it, but now they're done with it and it's time to move on. And now you just need to forget about it. And yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not recognizing the power and accountability that you might have to actually help heal and repair. And that yeah. shows up as minimizing and deflecting and turning the tables is a big yeah. one, right? Yeah. How many yeah. times do we hear um, when somebody will find a reason that, you know, that they can locate in their spouse that justifies what they said or did that was hurtful? Yeah. Well, I did that, but I did this. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's yeah. another kind of victim mentality, even though they might not be in that why me victim mentality. It's a way of not owning their own responsibility or choice to act a certain way and pinning it back on the person who they think quote unquote started it. Right. Exactly. That's another I think, symptom of that mentality. Yep. Yep. Definitely. It doesn't work. Right. It just ends up. Yeah. Like, yeah, creating, you just create a you cycle. Know, an argument. You know, yeah. confrontation. Yeah. Argument. Yeah. It's the That's same right. thing over and over and every day. That's it's just the same cycle. And then you don't want to look at each other. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it just increases and, frustration, right? Yeah. Because you're never going to get anywhere. You stay in gridlock. And then you think the goal is if they could just see it my way, yeah. both of them stuck in their position and want to get the other person to see it. And then, you know, there's no moving forward. Exactly. It's and then, and then not that, really and, seeing the vision. Yeah. The victim mentality, if you take an analogy of let's say that my car breaks down and I stay stuck in the car talking about how I got there, what happened, how terrible it is, how wrong it was. I'm, st I'm calling the manufacturer. I start talking to them about what they did that caused yeah. this problem, blah, blah, blah. But when am I going to start getting off the side of the road and getting where I want to go? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Once you, you start thinking about, okay, now what can I do? I don't want to be here anymore. I need to figure out who cares how I got here. <laughs> yeah. What can I do now? What right. can I do now to keep myself safe? And to get where I'm going. Exactly. When yeah. to that place of thinking in the relationship, then you're moving out of victim mode. Yeah. Before we well, get into the solutions, why is it so damaging? Like, what are some of the things that we see? I mean, we're, we've talked about why it's damaging in the sense that we stay stuck, right? On the side of the road, so to speak. Yeah. What else do you see? Um, How else? of it showing up, right? So um, other examples that we see, um, you mentioned apologizing um, and the men having a hard time apologizing. Women have a hard time apologizing too. It goes both ways. Um, yeah. Uh, but I want to take it a step further and go, there's a lot of apologizing, uh, apologizing happening and then no real change happening, like the behavior never changed. Yeah. So there's a lot of apologizing, but no behavioral changes that yeah, are long lasting. And no, it's exactly maybe, that. maybe there's a change for, you know, a few days, maybe a week, and then it just goes back to the old patterns again. Yeah. So it's like, um, then you're back to the cycle of, you know, bulldozing over um, boundaries or someone does it and someone has to connect and talk about it and um, maybe there's an apology, but nothing ever changes. It's the right. same thing over and over. So that's uh, one of the ways that it shows up for sure. Um, another way that it shows up is... Um, not taking responsibility and ownership 
for your life and relationship circumstances. Yep. This happens all the time. And I hear from women, mostly women, um, all the time who it usually will be like um, where something, there's an emotional disconnect and the woman wants to talk about it with her man and she'll go, you know, and want to talk to him. And as soon as she brings it up, because men by and large are just not used to and don't know how to emotionally connect and they're so uncomfortable with it, that a woman comes to connect and they turn it into, you know, a personal attack. Oh, she's attacking me. I must be doing something wrong. And um, then they turn and turn the tables and then it's all her fault. Um, the marriage problems are her fault. This is her mm -hmm. fault. That's her fault. And it turns into a barrage of 10 other things that she doesn't do right. And so, um, and then it just turns into a tit for tat usually um, between the two people. And it just goes nowhere. And this is the cycle that happens all the time with couples. Definitely. And so we see that one a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another one. And then I think there's shame too when people are in that cycle of apologizing and then continuing to repeat the behaviors. That's a sign that somewhere they're not recognizing their power to actually make changes. They might feel real remorse and like, oh, I did it again. I, I'm, I'm not making those changes. I'm so sorry. I can see how this impacts you. But I feel so powerless to actually do something different because the default mode is so strong. And it might be like genuine remorse. It's not like malicious. Like yeah. I keep doing the same thing over and over again, but there's a, either a lack of skill yeah. or not enough consistency in looking at what really do I need to do differently? And then there's shame around it that it's just easier to avoid it and just don't rock the boat and just keep going along until it happens again. Right, yeah. And that's such a victim mindset because you're, yeah, definitely. you're yeah, basically definitely. just kind of consenting to continuing to do things that are not making your life better. And in fact, are getting you on thinner and thinner ice. Yeah, yeah. because it yeah. just, more resentment builds and builds and builds. Yeah, and then you create a lack yeah. of trust also, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, this, and then mm -hmm. it, it begins to affect the, the all aspects of your, your, your you know, your relationship. Um, you know, maybe your relationship with the children, you know, and, and more of your relationship with your spouse also. Because, mm -hmm. um, when, when you exert, first, you know, a level of personal accountability, it creates a level of integrity within the relationship too. And with that comes, you know, an, an even level of respect for one another. Uh, generally, that's the way that's generally the way it, it, it begins to show up. And that's why it's so important that people learn how to be personally responsible for their and own their part in whatever role it is. And in, in, in the dynamic that it be, has become very destructive to their communication, their intimacy, their connection, it's very important that they own that part. Someone has to start mm -hmm. that process, you know, and a lot of times it's not going to be the guys, you know, like my wife said, a lot of these guys are not emotionally connected. They don't know how to be, you know, the, the historical mm -hmm. system has placed us in a role for a very long time. That's become endemic, you know, and, and mm -hmm. a, a huge problem in relationships. And a lot of guys are having to, you know, be made aware that you don't have the mm -hmm. skill. You, there, there's a new skill set you need to, mm -hmm. and you need to learn how to open up, and you need to learn how to, you know, be emotional, and and share your feelings with your, your spouse. You know, we we have this huge problem with you know feeling like we're being feminized if we you know, cry or show some emotion, and that's where your connection truly starts to begin with your partner. If you can't do that. You will never have a connective relationship that you want with your spouse or your, you know, your wife or whoever it is, it will, it just won't exist. So it's very important that, you know, people begin to understand that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's such a good point. Yeah. Um, another one, I'm guilty of this one. Um, another way it shows up is not owning your own triggers. Oh and, yeah. Um, this is basically yeah. when you're triggered emotionally something happens something upsets you something pisses you off something hurt you and you're triggered and you're going to that place and instead of owning your feelings and really working through them with your partner in a calm healthy 
um, therapeutic way, loving way, um, um, you start to blame and attack your partner when you get triggered. And we're all guilty of this. We all do it. Um, but it's definitely one that shows up yeah. all the time. Yeah, and it shows up with when we things like, oh, you you made me feel this way. You made yeah. me mad, so then I had to do this. Yeah. Yes. And you, we can't make somebody feel any certain way. I mean, yes, we can provide the trigger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We have to own our response and our reaction to that trigger. Yeah. And the trigger exists to teach us something. The trigger exists to show you where the unhealed places are still inside of you. Yeah. So always remember that and know that triggers are actually a blessing if, and you can reframe them that way. And that's why we're in a relationship. And a lot of people lose mm -hmm. sight of that. That's part of what we teach inside the program. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So what is the solution then? How do we get, because the antidote to all of this really is ultimately personal accountability, right? Yeah. That's, if we started to cultivate a commitment to personal accountability in everything, even situations that we did not consciously choose, that we feel like, I don't like this, this is not something I want. But if we started to take accountability for that, that would be transformative, radically transformative. It is right. radically transformative when you can start to build that in, not just in a flash of insight now and then, but where it starts to become a habit. So that I think is something that we should talk about is really, what does this look like? And Ned, you brought up the point of the vulnerability that comes up with ownership. When we own something, it brings up a lot of emotions and one of them can be shame. And if we're raised to believe something terrible about ourselves, or if we were raised in a traumatic or chaotic background, we might have a lot of shame around stuff, or we might feel on some level like it's not safe. Or if we own something, it's evidence of like admitting that we're a terrible person. Right, yeah. And we don't want the truth of that to be known, so then th there can't be ownership because that's, that's basically the same thing as admitting what a worthless person you are, right? So that when you start to feel like shame is getting in the way of taking personal accountability, that has to be the number one priority is how to speak that shame, how to, how to get it to the light because it lives in silence. Yeah. And even just admitting it and saying, I have a barrier to taking accountability and that is shame. Even saying that would be a massive step in the right direction. Oh, definitely. definitely. Because it's not that people are like, even consciously aware of like, well, I'm choosing not to take personal accountability. I'm choosing to live in a victim mindset. And, you know, that's just how I want to live my life. People aren't always aware of that. Right. It's more like shame guiding them and the avoidance of having to feel that. Yeah. It's just an unconscious thing. Yeah. So what do you guys, I mean, what do you think we can give? I have some thoughts on this, but the best advice we can give our listeners in terms of how to step into personal accountability and break out of feeling victimized and powerless in their circumstances and relationships. Well, I mean, for, for me, um, like I said before, it, it brings a certain level of integrity and creates a, a level of respect between the two of you, when you, when mm -hmm. you're able to own, you, you know, your part again, it, it actually creates a bridge of connection between you. You know, it, 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 it raises the level of commitment and connection between you and that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, yeah, it's a problem for a lot of people. The shame is a problem for a lot of people. We have a lot of, you know, automatic, you know, responses that need to be worked through. And, and your partner serves for you to identify what I call, <laughs> you know, these voids within us that have to be filled, you know, um, mm -hmm. we, and we can choose to fill them, you know, either with darkness or we can fill them with love. And when you choose personal accountability, you're choosing to fill that space with love and you're choosing to mm -hmm. show your partner that you support them in the place that they are yeah. by, you know, trying to, Fill that space that is normally void of anything with something that you can share with them that shows them that you actually care about the relationship and you care about. Yes, it. I love the way you frame that because it's like looking at it as not as an admission or a defeat, but as a loving act yeah. that's in exactly. service of your values and integrity and honoring the relationship. And if you can yeah. 
remember that. Right. Yeah. It's an easier choice to make. Yeah. Definitely. Right. It's a generous, yeah. loving, honorable choice. Exactly. Um, yeah. I think also what helps is if we can start to notice the questions that we're asking. Oh, and yeah, definitely. The question from why doesn't he make me more important? Why doesn't he love me enough? Or why am I not, you know, important enough for him to make these changes? Or why doesn't she see all that I do for her? Mm -hmm. If we put those questions into things like, you know, what am I allowing? What am I participating in? What have I done in the past that has paved the way for this moment right now? Right. Is there anything right. that I can do differently to change the narrative here? Yeah. yeah. Um, those are the powerful questions to be asking. Then you're moving into accountability. Yeah. So yeah. noticing the questions that we're asking, I think, is a really super powerful way of moving from feeling like, wait, I have power. Right. Another question you can ask is, you know, how can I respond with integrity and according to my values, which is really what you were saying, Ned. And then what does the situation say about me and what I desire? Exactly. What what exactly. what about this situation that I hate so much? What is it telling me about what I must have and yeah. therefore what I need to start doing differently? Yeah, well, I mean, it creates, you know, yeah, exactly. And now if, and it creates contrast is what, you know, it does. It shows you it really yeah. identifies what you don't want. And rather than focusing on what you don't want, why don't you use it as a positive and say, hey, you know what, this is really creating a clear picture for me on the other side of this, of what my relationship could look like, what my relationship, what I want it to look like, the yes. type of relationship yes. I do want to have. Put your emphasis and focus mm -hmm. on that, put your intention in that, and you be you, you, you see miraculous changes in your relationship with yourself and your relationship with your, your spouse and your relationship with your kids and everything outside of it. You know, you, you just, mm -hmm. everybody you talk to, you start seeing everything differently. So it's really important, like, you, yeah. how do you frame, you know, what's going on in your life, you know, and what aspect are you looking at it from? And how do you choose to go about moving forward through that process? You know, it's really important. Exactly. And I like also the idea of being thankful for our partner giving us that trigger and that they are really holding a mirror up to ourselves yeah. when they do that. And it's an opportunity to say, okay, what bugs me about this so bad? What does it say about me? What can I learn from this? Yeah, that's a gift, and it's something that I can use and leverage to get where I want to go. Because right. we know where we want to be, but if we don't have a vision of where we want to go, we're never going to get there. Exactly. Exactly. Please use this analogy. We don't get into a taxi cab and say, "Don't take me to Times Square." Yeah. <laughs> Tell the taxi cab where we want to go, not where we don't want to go, and that's right. how that's how we have to start thinking when we yeah, start getting true. stuck. We go again, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. What else can we do? What else can we recommend for people to do to get out of the victim mindset? Uh, well, from another thing that I hear is, you know, making sure that we ask for, you know, the right support. And and what I mean by that is um, there are a lot of situations and, and we've had discussions around this, you know, where people are, you know, my wife and I have been married, you know, almost eight years and we respect and honor each other. Um, to the point that the level of respect that we have for one another, regardless of what's going on in the relationship, um, we keep that dynamic w within our home, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and I say that, and I know some people are questioning, you know, well, if you have a problem, shouldn't you talk to someone? Yes, you should talk to someone who can help you with your problem. And most mm -hmm. people don't have the skills and most people don't have the knowledge to address what's going on with you you know i mean i'm not going to go and talk to one of my single friends um who's been single for you know most of his life or all his life or one of my partners who's been married five or six times and is divorced and going through a slew of women that he dates each week to help me resolve an issue with my wife it's not right. going to help you know so i mean so it's it's, it's making sure that we get the proper support that we need yeah. also right. you know and that and that yeah. is yeah. it may not be your family member you know so I mean, it's something that you want to really pay attention to do someone who is where you want to be yeah definitely yeah where you want to be or, or farther along 
And yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Don't exist in a vacuum. We have to be supported by our community friends and family that understand what you're trying to create in your marriage, who right. respect what you're trying to do, who are not judgmental of you and who will raise you up, who exactly. will ask you the right questions, who, who will support you according to your values. Right. If you're finding a support where you're just venting about your partner all the time to that person, that's really just perpetuating where you are. It's not yeah. getting you where you want to go. Definitely. And I mean, and, but you might feel fine in the moment, right? But it's not actually going to help you. Yeah. And not only that, you know, and we all know this, but you know, what you focus on, you generally get more of, you know, and if you're talking to someone who cannot, <laughs> when you're doing that, if they're not pointing that out to you, uh, they're just perpetuating the situation. Like you said, you know, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And now there's, so you got, Another yeah, thing, go ahead. I have to say this, yeah. um, that everyone must do is in terms of if you're wanting change, if you're wanting transformation in your marriage, in your relationship, in your life, um, something that you always got to be on the leading edge of is taking radical responsibility for your own upward growth. And I believe oh, yeah. that we all should be doing that from now until we're in the ground yeah. and um, you can't grow and you can't change if you're not constantly feeding yourself, investing in yourself and getting the help and the support around the areas that you aren't skilled at. Yeah. And let's face it. Most yeah. people are not skilled at relationship and marriage. It's why there are so many divorces. It's why we all have jobs. Yeah. Um, because we just don't have the skills. This is a different time. We're in a modern time, we're in 2018, and we have most people have the skills of their grandparents and great grandparents. Yeah. Uh, you know, a century ago, and we don't marry for the same reasons anymore. We there are different rules to all of this. Right. And um, so yeah, it's you've yeah. got to take ownership of your upward growth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always. So mm -hmm. important. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And the way that that shows up, there's a lot of different ways that that can show up for you individually, whether that's asking your spouse for something that you haven't asked for, whether it's making decisions around your own <clears throat> career or your own creative pursuits, your self-care, your parenting. If you're always thinking in terms of what is what is going to take me to the next level, what is going to improve my legacy for my kids? Yeah. What is going to make the next generation better and more evolved? Yeah. And what can I do today to create that regardless of what my spouse is doing or not doing that I wish that they would do or not do? Right. Yeah. You don't have to wait for that. You don't right. have to wait for them to be the perfect person or to stop disappointing you before you can start taking action. And you don't even need them to participate at all in some situations in many situations it really depends but a lot of times it just takes one person to say i'm taking 100 percent accountability of every situation and if both people have that mentality i'm 100 percent accountable for every argument we have i'm 100 percent accountable for our happiness in this marriage yeah. it's amazing what you can get done absolutely so beautiful. you can have a beautiful think, relationship yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I think if you can incorporate that and just say, you know, I'm going to start to ask myself questions that raise the bar for me in yeah. being able to take, like you say, radical responsibility, um, not quibble over what percentage of it is them and which percentage of it is mine. Even if I only have 2%, it's about owning the heck out of that 2%. Exactly. Right. And getting that 2% as good as you can. And until you have that 2% as good as you can, don't worry yeah. about other 98 percent that's their problem that's right and that's the personal accountability piece it's called mm -hmm. you gotta get happy regardless of what your spouse is doing period mm -hmm. that comes from within that is your inner work and that is taking she gone is she freeze i think she she just froze okay you know what she was just saying though while she comes back it reminds me so much of this um, video I saw where Will Smith was talking about his relationship with Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah. And how he got to a point, have you seen this one where he's like, 
you know what? I retire from trying to make you happy. You make yourself happy. And then we can come back together again. And they did, they had this agreement where they were like, we're going to be responsible for our own happiness. And then we're going to present ourselves to each other okay. as a whole people. That's bad. And from there, a really awesome marriage. Yeah. That's fabulous. That's awesome. Yeah. Instead yeah. of trying to get happiness through them, because Trying to put all your energy into things you cannot control is so incredibly draining. And, yeah, and, I, and I think people lose. It's I a think losing people, battle. Yeah, I think people, people have a tendency to lose sight of that excitement um, that they had in the beginning of the relationship. Because, you know, mm -hmm. we've all been there, you know, and I, you know, I've been there, you know, when, you know, when Kelly and I were together and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't keep my mind off of her. Um, you know, I, I remembered that. You know, and you know, I you yeah. get to this comfortable place as you go along through the years, and you begin to lose sight. And when you lose sight, it creates issues in your marriage. So, I mean, you have to continue to just like you know, you try to get better at your job or your business or your relationship. Um, you know, with uh, you know, your children, you have to create that same intention throughout your marriage. It's really important that people be able to identify that so that um, and so that when they see you, you, your, your spouse does come to you and they say, hey, I have a problem in this area. You don't have to feel like a victim. You know, you don't have to feel like, oh, this is, oh, yeah. this is so bad. Why are, they, why are you bringing this up? Why are you why are you coming at me this way? It's like, no, no. The connection's already there. You're yeah. living in that place. Exactly. And a lot of people, you know, especially if they've been together for a long time, they don't feel the love, they don't feel that spark, they don't feel that excitement anymore, yeah. but they're also not taking the same actions that they took when they started seeing each other. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You yeah, yeah. just like you yeah. accountability and you're like, I wanna create those experiences. Then you court the person again, you, yeah. start to, you start to behave and do the actions that you did in the beginning and that actually changes how you feel. Exactly, um, yeah, you have to get, you have to get invested and in, interested in your partner again. You know, and I, I know a lot, it's hard for a lot of people. I know it, but it, it's important that it take place that way. Yeah. Can y'all see me? Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. Sorry, we missed what you were saying, but um, fin do you remember what you were saying so you can finish your thought? The whole idea that we really can't get our happiness through our spouse, that we have to find happiness within ourselves. We are responsible for our own wholeness and well-being as a human being right. and not our partner. I'm not sure if she can hear us. Can you hear us, babe? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. good. Good. Yeah, we were just we were just recapping what you were talking about. Oh, sorry. It's okay. No problem at all. But I think that that's really um, the the thrust of what we want to say to you guys tonight is commit to taking accountability and the state of your relationship. This doesn't mean, though, and there is a little disclaimer that I want to make sure we make. Yeah, there is such a thing as actually being a victim, right? There is such a thing as actually it's just definitely crimes are being committed against you. Oh, yeah. You're in an abusive relationship. That's not something you can take accountability for. That That's a situation where you probably have been taking accountability for too long over things you can't control. Right. And that's not what we're talking about tonight. No. Um, if you're in an abusive relationship and, or you think you might be and you're wondering if you are, Kelly has posted the power and control wheel in this group, in the search field. And I think, Kelly, you were going to post it under this post at yeah. some point. Yeah, I'll too. post that. I'll post that. Um, because it's, I mean, we get, we talk to women. I talk to, I tend to, um, talk to a lot of women and they open up to me um, in a lot of my calls and a lot of my coaching um, when we didn't find out previous to coaching them um, that there's physical abuse, there's like violence going on. And as someone who was involved in um, a very physically abusive marriage for a number of years, and I stayed, I stayed in it for years, and I'm an intelligent, educated, beautiful, smart woman with a lot to give, and I stayed. And 
usually we stay because we are big hearted people and we think that it's going to change someday. It's going to be different someday. We're desperate to hold on to it because, you know, we have children with the, these men and, um, and that's being love addicted. That's being codependent. That's being a lot of things that are toxic. Um, that I finally realized I just don't want my kids being damaged any longer. And so, um, what we encourage is to leave those kinds of relationships as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know that there's nothing wrong with you. So if you're looking for answers to fix the problem because you've been, the blame has been shoved on you for so long, but you're continuing to live in an abusive situation, um, really examine your situation, get honest with yourself. There is no yeah. go around. And this is another thing that I have to say. So many times women will call and women will come in and they want a go around. They want, they want to know how to get around the toxicity. They just, you know, he can be there. You know, just tell me how to deal with the kids. Right. So then they want to take accountability. And they're like, I'll take accountability because if because if they could fix it, they would. Right. They would all but, responsibility and make it better but in those situations it's not doable no and there's no go that's around. Not something we would counsel him yeah, yeah there's no go around there's no way to sugarcoat anything to make it better for the kids this is damaging to the kids yeah. and so we encourage you to make a safety plan and make an exit plan and you can reach out to us for resources on that um, monica has a lot of resources on that um and so you know, there is that disclaimer that we always have to make. Listen, if you're in an abusive, toxic relationship, mm -hmm. um, you need to get really honest with yourself. And those types of situations are legal situations. Those that's beyond our scope of practice. We can't help you with that other than to put you in contact with local authorities and people who can help you and where you can get some advocates on your side. Um, because that, that right. those things require um, different kinds of interventions that counseling, therapy, coaching, it's not going to help you with because you're in a situation that needs tending to and the person you're with needs treatment, they need help, and they're sick, they're not yeah. well. Yes, and so then when we're talking about accountability, what we really mean is accountability around keeping your kids safe, doing everything you can to keep yourself safe because right. they're going to be safe if you're not safe. Exactly. Um, and so that's where the accountability comes in is recognizing like there's things I can do to get myself out of this situation. Yes. I say that recognizing that when we leave an abusive situation, the danger actually goes up a lot of times, not every time, Yeah. but, um, that increases the risk in a lot in a lot of situations. So there has to be strategy around how to do that, right. um, so that you can stay safe. So reach out to us if that's the situation that you're in. Yeah. Really, what we're really saying in general, if you're not in an abusive relationship, we want to encourage you to to full accountability for the experiences that you're having. What would it be like? Try it as an experiment for like three weeks. And just see, what if I took radical accountability for every single thing that happened? What if I owned everything that I could? Yes, yes. And just, just for kicks and see what happens. Yeah. It does. It, don't worry about like, well, then my partner will get away with everything. Yeah. No. no. It's an experiment it's because you might end up being so empowered and start to realize it doesn't mean you're letting anybody off the hook. It just means you're taking your power. And then you use that power as it gets strengthened to be able to set and hold boundaries and to communicate lovingly, but yet assertively. Um, yeah. All of the tools that that are hard to use when you're disempowered, when you feel powerless, when you feel stuck, you're not going to use those tools well. So it's not, you, the skills are important, but with the right mindset, yeah. that's really where the magic is. Exactly. So if you guys are looking for help or support around this, um, if you are resonating with what we're saying and you need support and you want to explore that you can book a free call with us. I will post it in this um, post. I'll put it in one of the comments. You just go to Monica Hoyt 
facebook.com forward slash talk. Yeah. And one of us will get on the phone with you for about 45 minutes to an hour and talk with you about what your dynamics are, what your problems are, where your mindset is, um, you know, causing problems, what the barriers are to changing things, where you want to go, what your vision is. And then if we can help you, we'll let you know and we'll help you create a plan. Yeah. Yeah at monicahoyt.com forward slash talk if you're at the stage where you're like I gotta make some changes now yeah totally because look this stuff isn't taught and we can't Mm -hmm. get into the nitty gritty of everything we teach because we don't have that time but you know you can go to counseling you can go to therapy and learn different modalities and we've got tons of different modalities that we teach and and pull from um, in the program but they might just last, you know, a week or two or a month. And typically you'll be right back into the same old default pattern again because you've never learned how to, and this is a huge elephant in the room that nobody talks about, mindset and energy. This is an energetic thing and no one teaches that energetic piece. And as coaches, we are keenly tuned in and tapped into energy. And so we see things and we're able to call things out from a place of love and really teach you how to shift your energy in real time. Because once you have that power and that control, everything shifts in your life. When you learn how to master your mindset, how to master your energy and how to show up in any room that you're in. Um, it's no matter what anybody else is doing. Exactly. And, and no one can. It's a superpower. Exactly, it is. It is. <laughs> and that's when you can do that. You can do anything. Skills, yeah. You learn the skills, you learn the tools, and you have the energetic piece in place. Then you can make these changes, and they're long-lasting changes, not just short-term. Yeah. Right. Know? Right. Because it you're matters. not like trying to go against your default mode. Exactly. You're not yeah. re- relying on your conscious mind to carry you and counter your deepest programs. You actually exactly. have to change programs at the deepest yeah. level yeah. yeah and that that's really the the missing link i think and i think it's the thing that separates people that are able to turn their relationship around and yep. actually break up old patterns and those that stay stuck and and end up just having to walk away because they can't fix it it's it, that's really what it is, is that programmatic rewiring and the energy and the mindset piece is such a big part of that yes yeah. huge Definitely. Yeah. So keep the faith, you guys. It's absolutely possible. Keep if you're having a bad relationship, today, I hope that you tuned in and I hope this is just what you needed to hear today. Please comment if you have any thoughts, if anything resonated with you, or if you have any questions about anything, we always will read the comments and answer those questions. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the group. And for next time, we'll be back again next Thursday. Yeah. Thank and you. The topic is going to be awesome. Yes, so tune in. (laughs) Bye. Bye, everyone. See you guys.